everybody and welcome to the very first video for our giraffe challenge. So what you see before you is the um, reference photo that I snapped at a zoo. And what I like to do, and again, these are all my processes, the way that I move through a painting. Take what you need and discard the rest. So if you have something that works for you and it works well, then please don't feel the need to follow what I do because we all have to find our own path. So <clears throat> what I have done with this particular photo, since we're doing an eight by eight, I have a program on my computer that allows me to be able to place a grid on top of the photo. And I don't know, I think you can see the lines um, on, should be able to see the lines on your computer screen. But basically, I did one inch by one inch squares over the entire photo. And then I number my squares because I find it easier when I'm doing my sketch. Um, for me, I like doing this grid method because it helps me to keep things in proper proportion. Okay, so here's how the process works for me. So I take a piece of paper and I transfer this same grid and number it just like I have over here. And then you look at a square and you see what's in that square and you sketch what you see in this square. And you continue on with each square until you have your giraffe or whatever it is you're trying to sketch out. And I just find, as I said, this works very well for me because it helps me to keep the proportions um, where they need to be and to keep things a little more accurate. So then I take it one step further because I like having a um, transparent, well, I guess I should say semi-transparent copy of my sketch to use once I start the painting process. So I will take a piece of tracing paper and put over top of my sketch on the paper and take my pencil and um, trace it off at that point. So now I have, I'll remove this so it's not so confusing. So now I have a tracing paper copy of my sketch of the giraffe. And the reason I like to do it that way, let me move a few things out of the way. So here is my eight by eight gesso board. Um, it is a cradle gesso board, meaning it has a seven eighths uh, frame to it. And then what I will do at this point is I will put my giraffe that I copied onto my tracing paper onto my gesso board. I may lower him a little bit. He seems a little high there. Let's see if we can find a little better composition here. Let me bring him down a tad and maybe over. Now I bring him too far over. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. So at that point then, once I position it where I want it, and I would take a piece of transfer paper and I like to use uh, Sorel is the brand name that I use. Let me grab the box here. Let's see, if, yeah, there we go. Sorel transfer paper. The important thing is, since I'm working in a water-based medium, is that it be wax-free, and this one is. Contains no wax or grease. And I buy it by the roll. You can reuse, you can tear off a sheet and you can reuse it several times before um, you'll have to tear off a new sheet. There's a, a dull side and a shiny side. And I, you wanna put the shiny side down. And then you simply want to take your stylus or you can use a pen or a pencil and you simply apply pressure and you don't have to apply a lot of pressure and go over all the lines that you feel are necessary to complete, to help you complete your painting. So I'm not gonna take the time to do that. I'll do that off camera and when I come back, I'll have this guy on the gesso board and we will start with the background. 
All right, so now you know my process for getting it, for getting my image onto my um, gesso board. If you would like to use my image, you will find an area where I have two PDFs. One is for my original photograph, which I have um, put the grid on for you, should you desire to use the grid. And then the second one is the supply list. And this, this is just kind of a general supply list. Um, I kind of just put together the paint colors, the palette colors that I figure I will be using to create this little guy and some of the brushes that I like to use and then the miscellaneous supplies like paper towel and, and this and that. So don't feel the need to run out and buy all the colors that I have listed. I may or may not use every single color that's on there. I was just trying to give you a ballpark idea of what I might be looking at. So here I am back. I've applied my drawing to my surface and now I'm ready to start the background. Uh, one thing I did want to point out was, I think I forgot to tell you that the reason I like to use the tracing paper um, sketch is because as I'm painting, if I have a problem and I feel like something gets out of proportion, it's very easy to take this and place it back on top of my painting. And because I can see through it, I can line it back up and I can discover if the eye has been made too large or the ear got moved or whatever the problem may be. So that's why I like to do this and include that as um, part of my process. You don't have to do it this way, as I said before. So um, I'm going to stop this video at this point and uh, we will start the next video with our background. Enjoy the process, relax, and have fun. That's the most important part. And I'll see you next time.